Hey guys, what's going on? And thanks for tuning in to Legatum Gaming. I'm going to bring you another vendor reset video. So like always, I will search through all the safe houses in the open world and in the dark zone, all of the checkpoints and the base of operations. I will filter out all of the poor gear and weapons and mods and just bring you guys what I think is the best to get this week. So you guys sit back, relax, Check out the description below. I've timestamped all of the key areas and times just to make it a little easier for you guys. If you do like the content, please hit subscribe. I do drop these in each week along with various other division videos, builds, and streams. All right, so let's make a start. The Advanced Weaponry Vendor. Now, not too much here this week uh, other than, again, this is a real slim chance, but I thought I would drop it in there for you guys. Uh, the AUG, which is running a 18.5 crit hit chance with Fierce, Swift, and Destructive. Now, although this is nowhere near the best roll I've seen, if you guys are after a AUG and you really want to get it and you can't wait, I would recommend getting this. So Fierce, Destructive, and Swift. Now again, the only thing you need to do is take out Swift and put in whatever you want. Now the rest of the weapons aren't too good other than the uh, M44 Carbine, which is okay. So 162% headshot damage with Fierce, Skilled, and Competent. Again, you would take out Skilled and put in whatever you want. Um, but that's again if you guys are really after a sniper rifle. Again, nothing down here, not not uh, too great, shall we say. So the best thing out of these is probably the extended mag with 116 mag size, reload speed, and crit hit chance. The rest are no good. Okay, this week at the special equipment vendor, they have various weapons, which I will go through uh, very quickly for you guys. However, the two top picks, or three, shall I say, for this week here is the Liberator. So that is a god roll. So 23% enemy armor damage with destructive, brutal, and deadly. So all you have to do is swap out the destructive and put in whatever you want. My advice is probably responsive. Um, but it totally depends on how you want to play or what you want to use it for. So the Liberator is a must for this week, although the credits is 1331 the Cassidy nothing too major and the rest of these again I wouldn't waste your time uh, looking through these maybe ACR at 22% enemy armor damage with fierce destructive and unforgiving now the best thing with this weapon is that unforgiving is in the third slot so um, basically the highest skill power talent pretty much there is which affects your uh, DPS is in the third slot here so that's possibly the best outcome we can get all you have to do is swap out Destructive if you want it, depending on if you're PvP, PvE, or how you play. So ACR, if you're after an ACR, I would recommend getting this. Now, although they have the SASG, the M1A, and the MG5, they're not no good. Um, again, I'm going through these slowly for you guys to see if you do need these for your builds. However, I don't rate any of them, other than the Rapid, there we go, the Rapid Vest. So, 1,200 firearms with exotic damage, resilience, health, and ammo capacity. Now, Rapid, again, not many people use that. However, I do rate it, depending on your builds. If you're running a hybrid or a tactician build, Rapid is definitely a very good vest to have. Not many people use it. I would certainly recommend trying it. My advice here is probably uh, increasing the firearms if you're doing a hybrid, or alternatively, swapping that to skill power. Uh, specialized isn't too great, although you could swap out the stamina and max that out, then you would have a pretty much god roll specialized backpack, other than the 1 or 2%, which is missing from ammo capacity and critical hit damage. Again, nothing too great here. Now, I do know a lot of people are after Predator's Mark just because of the update on 1.6.1. So this this could be uh, some nice knee pads if you guys are after them. Enemy armor damage is max, and all you have to do is swap out the stamina for, again, whichever suits your build. These aren't too great. Are not too great. Again, nothing too special down here. I've already checked these out. 
and then we go on to the high velocity magazine. Now, although this isn't used as much because people prefer the higher magazine size, which I totally agree with, if you guys do want to do a little bit of burst fire with a small round, this is a very good magazine. So 7% critical hit chance with 4% damage and then just 12% magazine size. Now, although um, you can get magazine sizes at like 116, 120% with uh, like 5% and 4% of critical hit chance and damage, they certainly make the better magazines. However, I thought I'd point this out. If you guys do want to do it, uh, you can get an extra couple of percent on the critical hit chance. The rest of these are no good. Now let's check out the blueprints. Again, what I say each week is you got to check this yourself because if I already have the blueprint, it will not show here. So I totally recommend you guys, as I always do, to certainly check the special blueprint vendor. So this week they have the Super 90 blueprint. Uh, the classic RPK-74, electronic gloves, electronic vest, and the two round suppressor. Now a couple of you know a couple of good things here. Uh, last week they had I think it was the MP7. I hope you guys picked that up. Certainly one not to miss out on. Um, this week the majors are Super 90 and the RPK74. Um, so for me I won't be getting them. However, again for you guys, help yourselves. Alright, at the base in the Dark Zone Gear Fender, they have the Prototype stam Stamina Mod. Uh, now it's rolled to firearms with skill power at 3,236. Now again, although the firearms could be higher, I thought if you guys are running a hybrid build and you did want firearms with uh, accreditation to skill power, then this is one I would recommend picking up for this week. At the Meat Locker this week, they have a nice Lavoa. Now, uh, enemy armor damage is 23%, which is the max, with Destructive, Competent, and Determined. Now, the best thing about this, like I've said previous, is the third slot is rollable. So what I mean is, it's a skill or a talent which you don't want. Now again, Destructive, depending on how you play, you could keep it. I've ran a couple of builds with Destructive, and I do like it. Uh, Combatant, which is pretty much given on almost all uh, sort of DPS builds, and then Determined. So you could swap out Determined for whatever you want. I would recommend uh, what was actually on the third talent earlier, and go with Unforgiving. But depending on how you guys play, I thought I would show you the Lavoa. At Camp Hudson this week, they have, again, another assault rifle. So, um, it's the tactical ACR with max enemy armor damage again. So, so far, it seems as if this week is very good. Now, it's got Vicious, Accurate, and Deadly. Now, uh, Vicious, again, you could run. The only problem with that is the stamina, as you can see, requires 4,790. So, I would recommend swapping out Accurate and, again, putting whatever you want in there. But, of course, uh, this weapon with these talents are an acquired build, so again, it's totally up to you. Now, the best thing here is the C79 scope, which is really, really good. So, uh, the majors are critical hit damage 18%. Critical hit chance at two and a half and headshot at six. So I'm certainly going to pick these up. Now, although critical hit damage could be a percent higher and uh, chance could also be a little bit higher, if you are after a C79 scope, these this is very, very good. At the Cavern Safe House this week, they have a God Roll Vigorous Chess Piece. So uh, firearms 1268 with 6% enemy armor damage, health at just under 14,500 with increased kill XP. Now this is a really, really, really good chess piece. Uh, these, this is what I run in most of my builds. I would certainly recommend you guys getting this, and my advice is to swap out the minor attribute for ammo capacity. This is a must for this week, guys. At the Kerman station, they have a really, really nice sight. So 17% critical hit damage, 3% critical hit chance, and 5.5% headshot damage. Certainly recommend getting this, and especially using this on SMGs, considering the major is crit hit chance. The crit hit damage on this sight will work really well with it. All right, so we've done the open world safe houses. Now we're into the dark zone. So at West 34 this week, they have a first wave vector 45. Now critical hit chance is 21%, so it's a really, really nice roll on that with brutal, destructive, and talented. 
So you could change out the third slot and put in whatever you want. The only problem is you will have to run with Destructive, which is actually a good talent. Uh, the only negative part of that is you need stamina at 3,832. So again, if you guys are after a Vector uh, 45, I would certainly recommend getting this one. Now, they do have a prototype stamina mod, which is, uh, stamina is 256, with skill power as a major. Now, they're not the best rolls, although if you guys are after a tank build and you're trying to aim to that, this is certainly a mod I would get. Also at West 31, I didn't add in, but they do have a stamina mod at 260, um, and that's got 3% skill haste, so you guys can go check that out. Okay, at West 46 this week, they have an MP7. Now, critical hit chance is 22.5, so it's only 0.5 away from max, with ferocious, dominant, and responsive. Now, this would be only a gun for PvE, so if you guys didn't pick up the blueprint last week, uh, I would recommend getting this and swapping out dominant with most probably deadly. Uh, I would like to say fierce or adept or something like that, but due to the nature of the requirements for electric Electronics, that would be very hard if you're running a uh, DPS build. Now, although Ferocious is great for PvE, again, just be careful of the uh, stats that they require on there. So, 3,832 for all firearms, stamina, and electronics. So, although this is a good gun and only recommended for PvE, just be careful of the talents, uh, the talent requirements before you get the gun. Okay, at East 64th, they have a pretty good um, electronics mod, so 243 with skill power 3182. Now, although the major stat of electronics isn't too great, it could be a little higher, it's not far off. So if you guys are after electronics mod just to boost up your build, then uh, I would recommend getting this for this week. At East 61st this week, they have a really, really nice VX1 scope. So, headshot damage 18.5%, with critical hit chance at 3 and critical hit damage at 4. Definitely a good buy for this week, guys. Okay, at East 58th, they have the Nimble Holster. Now again, um, they've had this a couple of weeks ago, and depending on what you guys, or if you guys feel it is uh, worthwhile, then check it out. So the Firearms is 1242, Stamina 1259, and Electronics is 1199. Now the Major is Reload Speed. I've, I've noticed a few people are now running Reload Speed. However, you could change it to Health or Critical Hit Chance. Now the only problem with Nimble in 1.6.1 is they've changed it so it's a heal over time so you guys make your decision if you want it then check it out okay at east 53rd they have a really nice firearms mod so 258 is the major uh and then skill haste at three percent so a lot of guys are after uh and are running a hybrid build again this is a really nice firearms mod to get i'm certainly picking up a couple of these Okay, at the East 40th uh, Dark Zone, they have a really, really nice inventive backpack. So the Major is 1240 skill power with 13, uh, 13,289 skill power again as the Major, and then burn resistance. So a really, really nice backpack, especially if you're running a tactician build or you're running a hybrid build. So definitely definitely recommend trying out the inventive a lot of people use the specialized i also like the specialized however i have been using the inventive uh backpack recently and the skill power is really really strong when you're at full health especially when you run it with an overdose which i do Okay, at the DZ2 safe house, they have um, some nice knee pads, which are prosperous and rolled to electronics. So 1245 electronics, and of course the talent is headshots, kill, grant credits. So obviously you get more for that every time you kill um, an enemy or an NPC, if you like, with enemy armor damage as the major, with uh, miners, shock, disorient, and bleed. So all in all, some pretty nice knee pads. Again, depending on your build, you could swap out the uh, electronics for maybe firearms, but depending on how you run, if you're running electronics for PvE, then this is certainly uh, definitely some nice knee pads to get this week. 
at the DZ5 safe house, they have a reasonable extended magazine. So 117.5% magazine size with 2.5% critical hit chance and 4.7% rate of fire. So um, pretty nice magazine if you guys are after one just to boost it up and you want a higher magazine size. 117.5 is a good size to have. Now critical hit chance could be a little higher, but uh, other than that, it is a really nice magazine to have. Okay, at the DZ6 safe house, they have a couple of nice things. Um, now, the only difference is, or the problem is, I guess, is it's only going to be credible to your builds. Now, they have uh, final measure knee pads, which again, the stamina major is 1240, which are some good numbers. Uh, and then the major is all resistance. So if you guys are after some final measure knee pads and you want to go a little bit tanky, then the only thing I would change is the major and you guys can put in whatever you want. Now, they do have some Alpha Bridge gloves, which are really nice. Uh, the only difference, or the bad thing is, is they are rolled to electronics at 1219. Now again, if you guys did want to have an Alpha Bridge electronic build, then 1219, I would increase that. However, again, like I said, it's got to be specific. If you're running an assault rifle, then I would roll these to firearms. So a really, really nice Alpha Bridge gloves. Uh, assault rifle damage is the main with critical hit chance and critical hit damage. Now, although the stats aren't maxed, if you guys are really after Alpha Bridge gloves and they do suit you, I would certainly recommend going to the DZ-6 safe house. All right, guys, at the DZ-07 safe house, they've got a couple pieces of gear you guys should definitely check out. First off, it's the Sentry Call Harness. So the majors on it is Skill Haste at 8%, Health at 15,699, and Minor is Ammo Capacity. Now it is rolled to Firearms at 1185, and that is the weakest point of the gear. So you guys can certainly uh, roll out Firearms and increase that to like 1270, or alternatively, you could swap it out to stamina or electronics, totally dependent on your build. But if you're after a centrical harness, I would certainly recommend looking at this. Now, they do have a Deadeye holster, which a lot of people have been using Deadeye, and if you are after that one last bit of kit, and it is the holster, I would definitely recommend getting this. So the firearms is 1260, the stamina is 1259, and the electronics is 1136 with the major as reload speed. Now again, quite a few people are using reload speed, depending on the type of sniper you're using, maybe like SVD, um, it could work for you. However, I would swap out the reload speed and maybe put on crit hit chance, but that is definitely good. Now, Banshee has been used or is being used more frequently in 1.6.1, so I would certainly recommend these gloves if you guys don't run Savage. Um, firearms is 12 25 with enemy armor damage, critical hit chance, and marksman rifle damage. So if you're not using a sniper and you're not using Savage, I would certainly pick these up and swap out the marksman rifle damage. We're at the last stop, so it's the DZ-08 safe house. So they have some really nice gear actually this week, or gear which you guys could pick up if you need it. So let's start with the sentry call harness. So firearms is 1170 with the major, uh, uh, enemy armor damage at 5%, exotic damage resilience at 10%, and the minor is ammo capacity. So if you guys, again, are after a centrical harness, I would recommend swapping out the firearms, being the weakest point on this, and swapping it to whatever you guys want. Now, the best gear in this safe house, in my opinion, is the striker's pack. So it's almost maxed on firearms at 1255. The major is stability at 15%, and the minor is ammo capacity at 52. So I would swap out major for either health or critical hit chance, but if you guys are after a striker pack or a better one to the one you have, this probably takes those boxes, so I'd recommend getting that. We then move on to the Predator's Mark holster. Now, um, they do have the gloves as well. Now, Predator's Mark has been buffed in 1.6.1, and the fix on the fourth uh, talent or the fourth gear piece set bonus has been fixed, and a lot more people are running around with the Predator's Mark holster. Uh, sorry, Predator's Mark gear. 
So if you guys were missing some of that, they have two pieces here. So let's focus on the holster. The firearms is 1232, the stamina is 1209, and the electronics is 1144. Now the major is crit hit chance at 3.5%, so it's not maxed, it could be 4. And again, the stamina and electronics could be higher, as well as the firearms. But again, if you guys are after that bit of gear until you find a better one, then DZ08 safe house is the place to go. The Predators Mark Gloves aren't great, however, Firearms 1206, Critical Hit Damage at 15%, LMG Damage at 1300, and Health on Kill. So, that's more focused at PvE, those talents, however, again, if you're a PvP player, then the holster is pretty nice for now. Alright guys, so that's the end of the weekly vendor reset. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'm doing this each week, so if you guys did like the content and you did want updating each week, not only on the vendor resets, but I'm doing build videos, streams, and much more. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, hit a subscribe, drop a comment, or hit the likes button. Thanks a lot, guys.